What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Let's Play High Swap for the third time. My third playthrough of High Swap Friends Zim, where I mix it up by making a commentary YouTube video instead of just playing by myself or sending photos to a friend of mine. Expect spoilers for this game and pretty much any other Homestuck content, not as much the epilogues and Homestuck 2. I haven't read those, um, since I'm just gonna talk about whatever. We're just hanging out, having a good time. Character voices, debatable. I said I wasn't gonna do them, and then our daughters ended up working out. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Today, it's going to be our good friend Demian. Let's make a new friend. So, you have just crash landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You are now completely alone in a strange world, desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you are desperate for friendship. Won't someone on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do. You're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? It's our good friend the hot dog boy. Yes, someone is approaching. A strange gray-skinned alien with a cozy looking vest. Perhaps they will make for a good friend? So, oof. Hang on. Sorry. Didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking kind of uncomfortable about this. Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of some medical treatment. Also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Hungry, huh? I see what your game is. You aren't quite sure what he's talking about. Then your eyes drift towards the obvious target. That exquisite hot dog he's holding. It looks really, really good. Your mouth starts watering noticeably. Oh no. I knew it. You're just like all the rest. Your agenda seems to, is to have me relinquish my delicacy. Well, forget it. I've been tricked out to two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. I said this last time. I'll say it again. I will probably say it several more times throughout this series. Well, Blood writes, fuck the high bloods. The social system on Alternia is fascinating, but ultimately uh, sucks to exist in. Also, his hot dog horns. Can we talk about them? Can we talk about the hot dog horns? And why? Why they're like that? You don't know anything about his blood color or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but you didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want is to, all you really want to do is to make a new buddy, so you don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. You just want a friend, not my sweet meat. Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Looks tend to get that greedy look in their eyes around my warm sausage. I just realized there's a second hive swap open, and that's why the music was weird. <laughs> I was wondering. These are odd ways to express the thing he's saying, you think, but it would be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. See, the thing about Demian's root, I think it's pronounced Demian. If it's not, oh well. Uh, my homestuck, my rules. I can do whatever I want. As I can never remember what root or like what the answers are. Cause I can't has I can't remember. Cause you always play his first. And so it take I just can never remember. Now Donna's is pretty straightforward. I think it's this one. Yeah. So ask if he lives nearby. Ew. I used to, I mean. My place was bombed by drones a while ago. Now I don't have a hive, but I'm making a workout here. I'm foraging for tasty things when I can. You know that meme? The how do you do that with your mouth, but with the bee emoji? I feel like that's how I feel towards Damien in his bold text. How is he changing the HTML of his voice? I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking to pe talking people into giving me meat products, I mean. 
You quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friend. You thought you had it rough, crash landing here, hungry and friendless, and come to think of it, it feels like your arm is broken? Your ribs too, maybe? But enough self-pity. This is about making a new great friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Are we friends now? Wait, is that official? Uh, man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit? See how things go. I'm not saying it's out of the question. I just think I should take some time to see if we're actually friendship material. Someone to trust, you know. Let's know they're looky loo gunning for my delicacy. Oh, damn. You got a got out over your skis again. Of course, he's right. This is it's totally reasonable. You feel sure you can do whatever it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking or mention looking at or mentioning his hot dogs since it seems to be such a sensitive subject. It does look like a bug. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it, in fact. Don't think hot dog spots. Don't think hot dog spots. It's working. You aren't even thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one, and no one even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice on some primal level your current not hot dog, non hot dog mindset. He smiles. He's adorable. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there, a mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have, you think. He's kind of adorable, really, if you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Oh, okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start get thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend. Nothing more. Tell that to fucking Zebra. Him and Link's roots are gonna kill me, because I fucking... Life makes me so uncomfortable, and I just hate Zebra. But I'm pretty sure everyone who plays friends him hates Zebra. I hope so. He's a horseman, legally. And the horsemen are just... We as a society have progressed past the need for horsemen. You should try to spark up some non-meat-related conversations soon before things get awkward. You wonder about his house. It got bombed? Yeah, you know. Routine drone pass through my hood. A little bombing, a little calling. That's how it goes around here. I was a lucky one. My Lucis. Not so much. He's a goner. I can not see he's fucking up. You don't know what a Lucis is, but you can deduce it was something someone important to him who probably died in the bombing. Alternia. <laughs> Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide the right play is to show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think I enjoy savory bund delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good though, it's hard to stop. Also, I favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. Something we did together. <laughs> How do we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please. <laughs> don't bring it up again. You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. You see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You have to consult this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. But what to do? I think this is the bad ending. So let's give him a reassuring hug. You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. You furrow your brow upwardly a bit as if to say, I know, I know how hard it is. You advance, and he leans backward a little, as if caught off guard by your sympathy. Maybe you're coming on too strong? But you know there's no turning back now. You just- you don't just throw the brakes on an imminent heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly, and it goes well for a moment, until you realize your arm is broken, and it ceases up reflexively in pain. <laughs> it jostles the hot dog in his hand, and he bobbles it. You both gasp. You try to detach from the hug so you can catch the dog, but it's already on the way to the ground. <laughs> Don't mind me laughing, I just... This root is so funny. <laughs> In your attempt to save it, you stagger backwards and slip. The hot dog gets smushed under your big dumb ass the moment it makes contact with the ground. Damien lets out a shriek. No! Oh. Dude. Dude, my dog! You scramble to get up in time, hoping you're not as owned as it looks. But your feet keep slipping, and your butt keeps grinding the hot dog into the mud. 
deadliest ass on Alternia. When the carnage finally subsides, you roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. Just a grody meat mud mash. Like the hot dog never even existed. Deviant howls in agony and slumps backward against a tree. Oh no, you fucked this up so bad. That's it, man. I've lost everything. Not sure what the point is of even living anymore. You are absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll be thinking about this moment for years to come. During those insecure moments when your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self-doubt and shame. Every night before bed. Still, you can't help but feel this guy is being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by for those who know where to look in this strange world. He himself said that he makes a habit of enjoying these, so they can't be all that uncommon. Maybe he just has an unusual psychological disorder surrounding a fixation on this particular food item? Yes, that could be it. Poor guy. This just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friends. Or for that matter, people who you're trying desperately to become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. You have an idea. You run it by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. The past is behind you. There's no need to wallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Demian perks up a little. Ew. You want to help me get another hot dog? Absolutely! It could be a fun adventure, you say. Something to bond over, to bring two new buddies closer together. Okay, you don't say that out loud, but you really hope it's true. I think I picked the good ending of shit. I don't know. Could be a long shot. Sometimes it can be days before I'm united with another plump treat. Glistening with perspiration. Steaming, relaxing comfort friendly in a soft, melt-in-your-mouth loaf. Damn. I really want a hot dog. Guess I don't have much of a choice but to take you up on the offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question. You haven't made a plan yet, and frankly, you don't even know where to begin. But he's interested in spending more time with you, which is the most important thing. You'll figure something out. You decided a display of confidence is called for here. A real show of leadership to improve morale. You smile, hold your head up high, and tell him to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really, but you give no indication of that at all. He's definitely intrigued. You've got him hooked now, you think. He's probably wondering if he hit the hit pay dirt, finding a new friend with THE hot dog hookup. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog. You've got to admit, you're enjoying the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. Fucking MSP Raiders got it bad. I forgot about that in the beginning. Got it bad. You don't want you don't want to do anything underhanded. Yet you can't help but feel you should probably milk this social gambit for all it's worth. This way, you say, as you begin marching confidently in a random direction, he immediately follows and begins rubbing his tummy. You begin to feel nervous almost immediately. You have absolutely no idea how this is gonna play out, or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of the journey. It is a miracle that this worked out, and I know that's just because this is how the universe works. And you know, Scratch is in charge of everything, fuck the cue all man. Don't mind me taking a drink. Oh well, you'll figure something out along the way. So if this is- I'm pretty sure this is the way to the good ending, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna save here. And... No. No. Uh... I'm actually going to sit fucking like, uh, I'm going to save and actually go back and choose the wrong options. So, let's go all the way, yeah, okay. Let's go to the next uh, transition, or the first transition. So we're going to ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog, because it looks amazing. Forget it. I'm leaving. Wait, <laughs> I'm leaving forever. Bye. We've been disrespectful. He told us not to think about his hot dog. 
and we did. So then this is the next one. So let's give him a friendly pat on the back. You keep it simple and pat him on the back a couple times. Everything's gonna be okay. Since you're his new friend, or at least working towards earning that status, he has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. Your friendly gesture worked. Right, I shouldn't let the past keep me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. Fun fact, that is part of the backstory of one of my D of my D and D character. I don't need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I could live off the land for the rest of my life, scrounging for sumptuous indulgences wherever I may find them, by rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I miss my Lucis, but I think he would be proud of me. If I could, if I could make it without him, I could survive on my own. I knew. Oops. <laughs> if I could make it without him, if I could survive on my own, I know he would be proud. If I don't even have to leave the planet, maybe I could avoid taking the ordeals altogether. Can't test what you can't find. If I play my cards right, I could probably live to ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. I like hiding in alleys and sewers, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. Does he... Does he have psychic powers? What if he had telekinesis this whole time, and just, like, didn't know? Because that's, like, the thing with... The thing with the homesick kids being our foundation of, what troll, of troll knowledge is that they all have weird fucking powers because it was necessary for the game but then you get to the other trolls and you're like okay our daughter has mind powers but does malik or elward is elward's psychic power just being undeniably attractive who knows so i think i might just be able to make this work you look confused at the last remark but again don't want to be impolite he holds up his hand as if to tell you not to bother. I can tell you're not from here. It's okay. Rust blokes don't live a long time. Blood classes higher, they may live progressively longer the higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle in into a nice short ride, keep a low profile, taking some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life, if you ask me. You understand. It seems like a tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with his destiny, you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping, gripping the dog a little less tightly. It's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude towards me delights to be strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. <sighs> I think there's some past first there is some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me? No offense, but you are. Drones would vaporize a hordeless goof like you and no questions asked. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to scare you. You laugh it off. You're not scared, you say? You've survived worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your show ribs with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. No bones, no intelligence, 10% leg, 80% gay. That's how it is. Sorry to tell you. Oh man. Looks like that arm's, that arm's hurt, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. He hands you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh wow, he wants you to hold it? This is such a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. You hold the hot dog from beneath with your fingertips as if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. Then he takes off his shirt, 
You avert your eyes for a moment, then realize that's silly. Nothing particularly indecent about this, you suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. There he is. Then he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, and hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. That should help. He's right, it does help. Your broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. This shirt smells like meat, too. You can't tell if you think that's a bonus, or if it's weird. You decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves meat, and so do you. It's your greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm officially- if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet, but I may be getting close. We're pushing all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means to me. You're so happy to hear this. It makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange. Like, maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly by his Lucis, you guess? You think that might be his dad? But again, you don't dare ask. Oh, when the positive feelings are flowing like this, why kill the mood? He gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes, regarding you fondly. Your heart beats a little faster. MSP reader. <laughs> Goof. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're, you're starting to wonder if all he's interested in is friendship. You hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship, or really companionship of any sort, but that's moving pretty fast for you. But you're too nervous to make your feelings clear on all this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest? Listen to this gorgeous meat product we both admire. I'm thinking, maybe we share it? I think it sounds good, actually. Oh, my, yes, that sounds wonderful. You're so hungry, and you're beside yourself with gratitude that Damien is willing to share with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. Here, I have an idea. He brings his face closer to yours. He holds the hot dog up between your faces with both ends of the dog pointing to his mouth and yours. The sprites get so close to the screen. Look at his little teeth. He's got little round teeth. You're not sure what he wants you to do? It, you can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to eat the hot dog with him. Letty and the Tramp style. You quit to see me, but I just flipped my hair. Yes, if pressed on it, you'd agree that the act is uncomfortably erotic, but you have to admit it is a good way to share a food item while it's ensuring it gets split about evenly. Rationalization. You absolutely and you absolutely loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It is completely at odds with your values as a person. You chomp down on your end of the hot dog as he does with his end simultaneously. Holy shit, that is so good. You take another bite and he this he times his bite perfectly. He's you're really good at this game. It's throwing you off your chewing a little bit, which makes you cough a little bit when you swallow. You don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm with him? That might be what a bad friend would do. You keep going, without really quite swallowing as you go, you get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how you're going to handle. You haven't planned for it, and it's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog collecting in your throat is getting a too bit too heavy, so you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag and cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. <laughs> He recoils, absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog and bun beds are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment. Then he puts his hand to his throat. Oh fuck, he's choking. This isn't this isn't supposed to be funny, but <laughs> this is sweat is red. He points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The high look, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. You get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist under his ribs, trying to dislodge his masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts, though. You'll have to make the sacrifice for your friend. 
Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you'll navigate that tricky subject once he's breathing again, but you'll deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save. You pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. Well, you try and try and try. His face is turning, well, not blue. A deep red? You guess because his blood is rust colored. Sure, that makes sense. You yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge glob of chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball, and the explosion creates enough force in the other direction. It causes you to actually lift him up into the air and actually suplex him into the mud behind you. You in turn go tumbling over him, and the two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down the grassy inclined toward a nearby neighborhood toward a street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street, but da Damien's neck blinds right in front of the sharp edge of the curb, and after flipping into the air once or twice, you come down right on his face with your big ass. You hear a crack. Damien? You slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth. Throat is clear of hot dog debris. Oh god. This can't be happening. You look around, panic. This isn't what you need right now. All you wanted was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. You have to hide the body. You see a couple kids creeping out of, an, of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've got to find a bush or something. There. Over there. Looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the vested, shirtless carcass over to the bush. You dump the body in the bush, and it's really not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. You've got to come up with a better- Wait a minute. Someone is standing behind you. She's back. The bitch. Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> well, you killed him! <laughs> this ending... <laughs> I think this might have been one of the first endings I got. So you come out of our daughter's route and, you know, gagging because I'm pretty sure I play most of this game in one setting. You know, gagging from the fucking gristle scene. Meet this delightful little hot dog boy and then you fucking kill him because you have the deadliest ass on Alternia. I can't remember if that's something they say in the game, but it's certainly true. So now that we've gotten both of those bad endings, let's return to the fun part where we were gonna go find a hot dog. It's fucking like, what? I think I paused. We'll get to him. He's all on the list of people who make me uncomfortable. We're talking about Damien right now. You late? So, recap. I don't think it's been that long. Recap. We're leading him on a wild goose chase for hot dogs. You lead him through the streets and winding through the yards of strange looking houses and he follows. He takes care to make sure you're both not seen, which could put you both in trouble, apparently. The improvised circular route appears to provoke his suspicion. Dude. Are you sure you know where a dog is? It seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just throwing anyone off the trail who might have been following you. He nods solemnly, as if that makes perfect sense. Phew. But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You've got to do something. Take some bold action to keep his interest in this wiener quest. You say this way, down here. This is a shortcut to the hot dog supply you're privy to. It's the mother load. Um, in the sewer? Yes, totally. It's just a short trek through the sewer. Shouldn't be more than an hour or several of sewer trudging. That is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on more juicy dogs. Oh, hell yeah. You know it. After you, man. There we go. An hour later, you are so deep in the sewer, you've lost all bearings and sense of direction. You could be anywhere right now. You've taken so many crazy turns. Still, you don't let up for a second that you're lost. Or you don't- yeah. 
You've made each turn with a decisive, decisive conviction. He's still following you, but now he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't say you're enjoying it much either. But you can't let on to the fact that what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like you do this every day. Just a quick jump through the sewer to hit up this vast, mythical trove of meat products. Okay, when you put it that way, maybe this all sounds a bit insane? Still, you're in too deep to second guess yourself now. Hey, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta stop and rest. I can't lie. I'm starving for a heavenly frankfurter. But this might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut out for this. You pause and look back. He's sitting down now, slumping against a filthy sewer wall. You're intensely relieved to see that you may have just won this impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. But more importantly than that, this looks like an ideal time to show some sympathy and have a bonding moment with your would-be friend. You sit next to him, and with your broken arm, put a hand on his knee in a platonic but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. I just... I kind of suck. I think Luzes is gone. I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. I'm probably just gonna get cold. I'm not good at going on adventures, or doing anything hard. Oh, good. All I'm good at is finding an easy meal here and there, however I can get it. Like talking other, like talking people out of their fine sausages, using tricks or other ploys, which end up losing me friends. It's been unthinkable that anyone would actually do anything nice for me or would want me to have the sweet, sweet meat I desire. At least it was unthinkable. Until now. Your heart begins to race. Could it be? Is... Is this shitty improvised sewer escape actually working? You can't believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard to try to get my hands on another magnificent banger. Sorry for being emotional, but like, this is new for me. I don't know how to handle it. I'm... I'm just so... so grateful. I'd be thrilled to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed. Unbelievable! It's almost too good to be true! What now? It's such a sudden turn of good fortune, you hardly know what to do. Should... Should you hug the guy? Last time that didn't go so well, but this time he's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily defile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. What's that? A deep rumbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit, they found us. It's a drone, dude. I guess like, I guess on like, sewer duty? We've gotta run. He gets up, grabs your hand, and sprints. He's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. He turns this way and that as the rumbling gets closer. Ah, uh, the sewer water. <laughs> But he slips on something, and you both tumble into a river of horrific sludge. I don't even want to imagine what's in troll sewers. Ew. Bro! I can't swim! Help! Your bad arms find per finds purchase on the ledge, and through it, though it's very painful, you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. Actually, this plays into personal headcanon that low bloods cannot swim because they are not allowed to go near the ocean and sea dwellers are per pricks so I feel like they wouldn't let anybody swim <laughs> he coughs and gasps for breath you find a nearby ladder shove him upward until he starts climbing on his own and follow him <laughs> you burst through the lid on the floor and you both flop out of the hole drenched in filth, smelling horrible, and completely exhausted. But at least you're safe, you think. Hey, man. I just want to let you know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I don't need hot dogs in my life as much as I thought. Maybe that's not the real treasure after all. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. His bushy hair is slicked back from his eyes to the sludge. He's giving you a penetrating, soulful gaze of presumably pure friendship. Or is it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense! Uh... Then something catches your eye, just above him. Something dangling. 
lots of dangling things actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold in here. Freezing, in fact. You finally realize, holy shit, you're in a weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangling meat products, including many sausages. Thousands of them. You begin to sob. Your sobbing soon turns to unrestrained wailing of raw catharsis. It joins you, and the tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other, and you let it all out. Suddenly it hits you, both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. Because we're in meat heaven! <laughs> this picture is so cute! Just... I love the rest. All of the rust bloods are fantastic, and my D and D character, who I love, is a is a mutant bronze blood. But just, I love the rust bloods, and also Fazer didn't deserve what happens to him. I'm gonna get that out of the way, fucking right here, episode two. I don't even know what volume he's in, fucking episode two. I'm here to establish, not only do I dunk on the high bloods, but fuck Doc Scratch. Hope we can all agree on that. But, that was Demian's route. Made a new friend. Got some hot dogs. Armed, you know, no medical attention yet. That's fine. We'll get there eventually. And, I will see you in the next video. Peace out. See you then.